What up, Voiceless family? Welcome to the Voiceless Podcast, and we back. We back. It's been a minute. I'm your host, Meech, a.k.a. Scooney Mac, mm. a.k.a. Black Lives Matter, mm. a.k.a. Young Meechie. And to the right of me, we got... Reese, um, a.k.a. Reese's Pieces, a.k.a. They always want more than a piece. <laughs> a.k.a. Uh, Black Lives Matter, a.k.a. Uh, and br- police brutality, a.k.a. Concern Brother. Yeah. Sir. And to the right of Reese, we got... Tough. I'm King. Man, here another week. Glad to be back. Proud to be on the show with my brothers, man. Black Lives Matter every day and always have. <laughs> always will. No AKAs this week. Hopefully we see another week. So this, so this will be the week to do the AKAs if we don't see another week. Bro. Hey, if not, man, those AKAs <laughs> are, are gone. Team, AKA Heaven, AKA <laughs> He said Heaven. Heaven's Angels. God's Gates. Blessed. <laughs> blessed. First in line, AKA First in Line. Um, you know, it's like. Hell yeah. Yeah. And we got a guest today, and I'm going to pass the mic to Reese to Nothing introduce the guest. guest. Yeah, um, so, you know, we only bring, like, the, the dopest of guests, you know, on this show. And today we have one of my partners from Howard University. I met him out there. He's actually from the Bay, he's from Hayward. But I'm going to let him yeah. introduce himself a little more and tell you, like, what he got in store. Yo, 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 uh. My name is Jamar Jasper, a.k.a. Sleepy Too Tired, mm. you know, a.k.a. Black Lives Matter, a.k.a. Peace, unity, positivity, and love, all of that. That's what I'm about, really. Uh, met Reese, one of the most influential people in my life, to be honest. It's like, true brother to me, that man is also about peace and unity, positivity, and love, and I really stand behind everything y'all doing, for real. So just thank you for allowing me on this platform, for real. I appreciate, I appreciate you, you being brother. on, brother. Got to. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to start off with the first topic. Um, about time y'all see this podcast or listen to this podcast, y'all would have seen that I did two other podcasts where I spoke about George Floyd. But I just want to give y'all the mic for y'all can kind of share what y'all thought about kind of like everything that's been taking place in 2020. And of course, George Floyd being murdered, which sparked this movement and really brought this movement to light. So I'm going to start off with our guest, actually, and you can go ahead and this is open mic for you. You can let us know what you think about everything that's going on. Man, this whole George Floyd, and it's not even just George Floyd either. It's just the mistreatment of our people for so long has just been happening ever since we got here, really. And it, it, it takes all of this just for people to recognize it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm happy that people are are getting out of their seat and really doing something about it now. But, you know, um, it's been a long time coming. And with this, I feel like it's significant because I see a whole lot of races coming together. You know, it's not even just us, but it, it's a lot of other people seeing that this is a, a, a real problem in our society. So I feel like, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that change is going to come out of this. Obviously, super, like, this situation should have never happened, but because yeah. of this, maybe change can come out of it. You know, that's how I feel. Definitely, definitely. So I'm gonna pass the mic to Reese and Keem as well. Okay. I haven't even uh, got, you know, heard what y'all thought about everything that's going on. But go yeah. ahead and let us know. I feel like part of the reason for that is that it's like hard to put into words. You know what I'm saying? Um, but. I don't know. Sometimes I just think like when when things like this happen, I just think very like radically. And I feel like I I know that we aren't in change no more, but I feel like we still on the plantation when it comes to police and this. They like the 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 the, out, the outside. What were they What were they called? The field. Uh, uh wasn't like I'm trying to when they were like, patrolling the field. Yeah, patrol, yeah, yeah those yeah, are patrols. basically police now. Like the the slave the, patrols, slave patrol, yeah. yeah. So, just because they aren't that overt in their language, don't mean that anything has changed. And just seeing these past events, you you know for a fact that nothing has changed. So, 
I um I don't know. I just felt like I don't even watch these videos because this is like if you watch like say you watch LeBron like on TV like every night, mm -hmm. right? You watch LeBron on TV every night. You like oh that nigga is dope, mm -hmm. or oh he is dope, All right? Mm -hmm. So that becomes normal to you. You know what I'm saying? I don't want this to come to become normal to me, but it seems like it already is. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of in denial of it. But it's just that rampant and that, um, I don't know, it's just that malicious. And police brutality doesn't always end in death. So we have to, uh, I support the Black Lives Matter um, people who are trying to defund the police and put that money into different, uh, like, resources. Mm -hmm. They, uh, I saw a comparison or analogy of it, and they said, like, um, in the hospital, ER doctors work in the ER, you know what I'm saying? And pediatricians, like, they work for pediatricians. We shouldn't have police, like, handling all of this shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it should be way more than an eight-week period for them to become a cop. Like, I f lawyers go, what, seven years to be to find out the law? And you got an eight-week course to become somebody with a badge just yeah. because he passed the test? Like, I feel like, I don't know. I, I think change is on the horizon, but I just hope we don't hit the coronavirus uh, bug uh, and everybody gets all out and everything is like almost back to normal and we just forget about it. So I'm just praying we can keep this momentum up and see this thing out. Yeah. It's actually interesting. I feel like this can, I want to give, go more deep into what you were saying when you talking about like, be almost becoming desensitized to it but i want to open up the mic to keem first and you can go ahead and say anything that you thought about uh everything that's been taking place from the protests and of course from uh we started every all of this with george floyd being murdered by police officers oh uh, man uh, it's been a lot like a, a lot of back-to-back -back pain this year so like for it to come down to everybody being in trapped in the house like and then not being able i mean like i don't know who's to say if, if covid wasn't around everybody was on the streets they saw the george floyd situation had it gone down differently just because of you know somebody different would have been walking on the day that actually might have done stuff something instead of said something but it happened the way it did and then i don't know like like reese said it's hard to watch the video all nine minutes like you could clearly hear him you know how do you for his like, life, yeah, how, how many times sandy can breathe does you ha do you have to hear that if you're a human like if you, it's you have stuff. feelings how many times do you have to hear i can't breathe for you to like okay let me maybe not kill him like man but for <clears throat> for it to like incite the the movement that it did um i hate to say it was necessary because you could just go down the history books. I, was, I found myself saying it earlier. I don't know how many black officers have killed black men just unconsciously for no reason. Or how, I don't know, how many times does it happen? Yeah. Has it ever happened? I don't even think that's I the like point. It don't matters. matter who's pulling the trigger. Like, is we still getting clipped off and that's all coming from a, a racist institution, which are, who are the cops, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. Yeah. I wanted to kind of go more deep into uh, the fact of possibly being desensitized by, of course, seeing police officers constantly killing black people, right? Police brutality. And Reese, you kind of, you started this off by saying like constantly like watching this video. I didn't even want to watch this video. Um, for me, I seen the video, but also um, I wonder how relevant it is actually not only in our own community but for other people out there when we constantly see people being killed due to like social media and now everyone could just record it um do you feel like you have become more desensitized to it definitely because for a while i probably didn't even watch the video like for a long time i just saw it and i'm like I wanted to be like, man, another one, but that was just because of my own personal life, you know, I tried to just scroll past it, but 
you can't just scroll past shit like that. Like, it keeps, it, you know, like, thankfully, it keeps coming around. And it keeps resurfacing. Like, George Floyd was killed by every day. I wake up and I go, man, he did that. That actually happened. And we, I thank everybody on social media for keeping me. Because, like, you know, the world moves so fast, I forget about things that happen in Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. It's crazy that that small 10 minutes affected the whole world like that. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And we need to keep sharing it and keep, I keep reliving that, Keep our foot on their neck. Keep that, me? man, keep that same energy until something to change. And I want to get your thoughts on that as well. Do you feel like we can be, do we become um, more desensitized when we see this constantly taking place um, on social media? I feel like it's kind of like how, like what Reese said, when I saw like, you know, all these videos, I kind of got to a certain point where I was like, man, there's so many, like, I don't even want to see them. I don't necessarily think it's like desensitized, desensitization, but it's like, there's just an overflow of of content out there and it's so violent so you know unjust that it's like i don't even want to see this anymore because i'm just sick and tired of seeing it all the time but like honestly i feel like some people may have gotten used to the idea that this sort of thing just kind of happens so it's desensitization on that part where it's like you know i'm used to police you know brutality but in terms of like videos themselves man it just get more horrific each time it happens that i just don't even you know want to see it but i feel like it's our part to watch that because we need to see how they're how we're being treated you know yeah um i feel like even not just from a video standpoint i feel like we're almost born to become desensitized to it like our parents tell us what we we they tell us what we shouldn't do to to get killed by police officers right so we're already trying to conform to not get killed right they tell us to do certain things so it still don't work it still don't work because it's not even a guarantee that it will work but it's like to make us as safe as possible yeah it's it's wild that we have to grow into that kind of mentality when it comes to people who are supposed to serve and protect and like i don't know it's just weird seeing a protest and just seeing all of these military trucks all these ak like we're not a foreign country like we're not we're not invading y'all right now like why do you need all of that y'all just provoking the the whole event by bringing all of that out brought the army to city streets Bro, mm-hmm. did you did anybody see it. oh my bad man I was about to say though, did, did anybody see like the tweet that said um, they want us to cooperate and or they they tell us um, just cooperate with them and go along with the apprehension and detaining to like you know push the process through. Mm-hmm. That they said it's like the same thing as telling women to like cover up and like not wear provoking clothing so they don't get raped. Mm-hmm. That's wild, man. Like. If they got that mentality, they're going to do it regardless of what we are doing or not doing. Until we it's defund them. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah, I was, at, no, I, was, yeah I was at this uh, brief um, protest in Sacramento. I was there briefly. And um, my brother and sister actually went as well. It was on 12th Street in Sacramento. And they were peacefully protesting. And when that happens, I mean, I don't think police should be just aiming like rubber bullets in like people's eyes. But unfortunately, someone did. And my sister got hit in the eye, and now she's like, like has, has a 99% chance of not being able to see again. So it's like I don't I don't understand that that mentality, that hate. It's like, and it's, it's so much that I want to do, but. I just feel like we need to think differently about how we training and who we hiring for these jobs. And if you uh, police, I feel like you should have you should have to live in that county at least that you police in. Yeah. You can't just come from a whole different jurisdiction and try to police some people. Like what it, at that point they're like cattle to you, you feel me? 
Like, that doesn't, that, they're not humans to you. So I just feel like there needs to be a complete reform. I want people to also um, understand that. Show you my shirt right quick. Like, I feel like right now it's almost a trend to support the Black Lives Matter movement. And I'm really for everyone that's, you know, actually really do care and do want to support it. But I want people to also understand that this is actually real. Like, this is a real life situation that George Floyd was actually a person. I know after a while it can seem like he's just a name because you see that name trending constantly. But I want people to know that person was actually a father. He, like, he was actually a family member. He was actually a son. So him being murdered by a police officer, I oh, know wow. people can look at it and just be like, become desensitized to it. But I want them to really understand that. Imagine that that person was your family member, right? And not no race involved. Imagine that that person was your family member or friend or whatever the case may be. You may feel more like you want to protest or do something about it. So to all those people that are trying to change the narrative about the Black Lives Matter movement, about the protests are trying to say that it's rioting or trying to overlook it, like, please stop changing the narrative because ultimately, like, this this actually means something to us. Like, this is actually real. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, yeah, it's always, it's always ch somebody changing the narrative. Even when Cap was kneeling and told y'all what he was kneeling for, y'all still took it and turned it around and said it was about the flag and the military. Like, bro. Okay. And crazy. Like, I don't know how recently they published this story or when it was released, but it come to find out, like, I mean, I, I was a Niner fan. I didn't even know. But Cap was actually sitting during the uh, national anthem, and one of uh, our Niner faithful who also served in the military. It's like a Green Beret or something like man, that. Man, like, saw the gesture as, like, flat-out disrespectful and actually wrote Cap a letter, and lap, and, and, and he wrote, he, uh, excuse me, he read the letter, and later they actually sat down, talked about it, and he ended, up, he ended up telling him, like, hey, man, I think it's more respectful if you take a knee because when we take knees, we're actually praying for our loved ones or our lost soldiers from battle when we're at the gravesite. And that's how the knee became what it was. Mm -hmm. So for him or anybody to say that it's a disrespectful thing to the flag, well, you got to tell the guy with the green beret then, you know? Don't even tell Cap. Like, yeah, it's yeah. got to start from the source. Before we, uh, go, before we go to break, I want to get uh, your thoughts on everything that we have said so far and just give you the mic. Man, um, I just wanted to say I'm real happy about what y'all are doing because... Uh, the name of y'all podcast is The Voiceless, and we have been voiceless for so long. Y'all are providing true, you know, thoughtful insight into what's been going on. And, and I just want to really say thank you for me and for the, you know, black community in general. So, you know, I keep doing that. I love to be on the show again. My phone is actually finna the dodge. So I don't know if I'll make it back to the next section only because I'm low-key stranded. But, um, you know, much love. Oh, man, much love. Yeah, you can go and give uh, final <laughs> words love, to man. the audience, which, whatever you want to say. As a people, we can't let this movement die out too quickly because a lot of people are, I don't know if a lot of people are, are experiencing this, but I've noticed that fewer and fewer people are talking about, you know, let's go out and protest, let's go out and get active. And most movements last for a long time. So we need to be in this for the long run until we see change. So keep our spirits up, keep our hearts going. And, you know, as a people, we need to stay united and fight against the common enemy. Man, I like our people man. would say, man, keep that same yeah. energy. Peace Definitely, and love, man. Brody. Thank you for being on the show. Appreciate it. See you soon, brother. Shred Peace and love. Man. Shred life. All right. And Shred life. And we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the cancel culture. And uh, we're going to give our closing words. So we'll be back. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. George Floyd. That is nine. George Floyd. That is nine. George Floyd. That is nine. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No truth. We're back from the break. And now I'm just opening this up for discussion. Let us start off with this. It's been a lot that's been going on in 2020. 
Uh, we didn't expect coronavirus to hit the way it hit. But, um, yeah, like, how's everybody doing? How's the life? Uh, how was life in quarantine? Um, I mean, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. But, you feel me? I, I still like to, you feel me? Um, get out, you know what I'm saying? You still gotta get out. Can't just stay in the house. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's affected everything. Period. Everything. And that's, I don't know, that's uh, a part of the reason why this this protest is so strong right now. Yep. The, the sports and all of the, the distractions are on hold. And we get a chance to just we outside today. We just get a chance to see it. We outside today. Exactly. I got time today. If the if the coronavirus didn't hit, we wouldn't have such like everybody focused on the protests right now, focused on Black Lives Matter movement. Because it'll be right now. Wouldn't it be the finals? It'd be the NBA finals right now. Yeah, but, but right now, let me also say. Yeah. That um, yeah. <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Back to me. All right. So, I wanted to get y'all thoughts on the cancel culture. Okay. You know, like cancel culture, kind of like how right now, let's say if you say something um, that's not. So one example, the Black Lives Matter movement. If you say something that's not pro Black Lives Matter, and let's say you're black and you have your celebrity with a platform, then you know everybody's like, you cancel, cancel. I ain't, I ain't, you know, watching whatever. If you're an actor, I'm not watching your movies. If you're a musician, I'm not listening to your music. You're canceled. I want to get everybody's thoughts on that. And before I get your thoughts, let me just read to you a couple tweets that sparked this for me, um, this topic. And recently, everybody knows the actor Terry Crews, right? Terry Crews, during, in the midst of everybody protesting, he tweeted this out. He said, defeating white supremacy without white people creates black supremacy. Equality is the truth. Like it or not, we are all in this together. Then he went on to say, any black person who calls me a coon or or and Uncle Tom for promoting equality is a black supremacist because they have determined who's black and who is not. And then since then, uh, you know, you had, you know, that pretty much opened up the gates. He's so sad we don't consider him black. <laughs> <laughs> that opened up the gates. Amanda Seals, everybody who doesn't know Amanda Seals, isn't Amanda Seals a comedian? She was also a host on The Real. She tweeted out, uh, well, one of her tweets said, Coons are Negroes who choose white approval over black advancement. And this is like in response to Terry Crews' tweets. I think that perfectly sums it up. She also said, Always beware of Coons in the mist. Case closed. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next case? Come on. Expose him. Send me on the next one. This one is closed. Uh, and also, Tyler James Williams, which is Chris from Everybody Hates Chris. The son of Terry Crews, literally, yeah. he also addressed Terry Crews' tweets, and he, he came with a more positive approach. He said, I'm not trying to call you out, Terry Crews. You know it's all, <laughs> you know it's all love, always. But we're rightfully angry right now and fed up with anyone not with our cause wholeheartedly. I don't want to see that energy pointed your way or diverted from the cause. And that's He's what he said. completely right in that. Yeah. I feel... Like black, black supremacy. We just trying to get black equality, <laughs> black equity. You know what I'm saying? That's all we asking for. Black supremacy. Yeah. What's what? Your, what's your uh, thoughts on this, Keem? Man, it's got me speechless. Cause like, at any point, did we ever ask for black supremacy? No. It's like. Equality is all we ever ask for. So for him to say that, it's kind of like reiterating the point that we're standing on. But for him to kind of throw the black supremacy in there, we kind of look at him like, OG crazy is here right now. Like, 
you like what? What are you on that shit, Patch? <laughs> you, <laughs> you, like, explain <laughs> that word to me <laughs> before you tell me you that's what it shit, is, Patch. Like, what are you doing? Oh, that's unprofessional, huh? Oh, anyway, you gotta write up. <laughs> you gotta write. That's crazy though. Like, and a bonus. Now <laughs> he gets. I mean, like he literally gets from riot and protest. Because of uh, wrongful death in police custody, he gets our reaction to that situation. Black supremacy. Like you definitely took a leap. And here's here's what I gotta say. See, I liked uh, I liked uh, what's what's his name? Chris. From Everybody hates that. Chris. I'm trying to remember to see his actual name. Uh, Tyler James Williams. I liked his response more. Then uh, Amanda Seals, of course, Amanda Seals was just straight to the point, <laughs> straight to the point. But as long as I might like her, <laughs> I think, I think I want celebrities, uh, especially black celebrities. If you're not saying anything that's supporting the movement, I want you to understand that whatever you say could give <laughs> power to. I want you to understand that we're gonna get you in this time. <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> Whatever you say, the police line. Come on. Whatever you Let's say go. could be held against you. I just want to be <laughs> you watch your mouth. <laughs> now nah, I want to say, okay, whatever yeah, you okay. say could be used as power for those that are completely against the Black Lives Matter movement. I don't understand these. Like, like, like your boy. And then, like your boy. And then you could be changing there. We ain't like, gonna speak like though. Boy. No, no we ain't gonna do it. it. We, we got to. We, like. <laughs> Like Speaking on that cancel, like, ooh, we could cancel Terry Crews if he wasn't on Everybody Hates Chris. What's his, like, if he had a major role, I'd not watch it. You know, like, a light check. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, he ain't the major <laughs> he's about role. He's to say I love What is he the major <laughs> role hey, He's in? really, that's really him in real life, bro. Like, he takes care <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> he's like, I fucking do. <laughs> what? Oh, what? That how, that that's what he said at the end. He's like, you got nice. He's like, I'm a boy. I don't know. I gotta watch you get on. He jumped to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the cut scene. <laughs> the suspense. Remember? Because he was, he was like, he was like, I'm. He was like, I'm a boy. He, he was like, wait, Damon. So you telling me? He's like, you telling me you're not white? Remember? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he's ready to smash that boy, Marlon Wayans, or one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was it? Was it? Oh, I that was white chicks. Yeah, okay. yeah. I don't oh. know why I was thinking about Friday after the next. <laughs> I was thinking I was. That's why I was tying in. Cat why is he gay in so many movies? <laughs> we about to... Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, Terry, Q, can you can you write me? Can you write me, please, so I can understand? <laughs> I mean, maybe if I get a little bit of fan them and they pay me a little check with a combo on it, I can stand over somebody in the toilet. Nah, fighting for their life? No way. But That's kind of stupid. The overall point, the overall point, celebrities, especially if you're black and you have a platform. Watch what you say. <laughs> watch what you say, especially because... Oh man, I don't know why I need some water now. I can't even figure it out. Because it's hot. (laughs) Say what you need to say. Don't watch what you say. No, say what you look, and don't even be silent about the situation. Because you be silent, you gonna get on you too. You better (laughs) better speak the right opinion. Once we get right, we gonna remember you, boy. I'm gonna get right with you. (laughs) On game. I'm gonna get right with you. Okay. We all gonna. I ain't never looted a celebrity's house. That might be the first is that, place. Is I that have. referring to the looting? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a robbery. <laughs> we, all, we all run in there like 20, 70, 80, 100 deep. Like, what they say about oh, <laughs> 100 deep, bro? How big is this house? <laughs> How big is this house? Where we at? <laughs> we in LA, bro? Like, to hold them pecs in that house, Terry Crews better have a big house. I'm, I'm in that thing. <laughs> wait, wait! I just realized what you said. <laughs> just, all right, so we're gonna um, we gonna rob them. We're gonna talk about. No, just kidding. Oh wait, no! I wanted to I wanted to finish my point because I couldn't. I don't know. I need some water. But basically, if you're a black celebrity, you have a platform. 
if you say something that's even remotely against the movement or it's just changing up the narrative, it could be used to literally not only change the narrative, but they could be used it as power for those people that are completely against the movement, like people that are racist or people that just simply don't care about it. So whatever you say, make sure you really check what you're going to say. That's a good point. Yeah. And make sure you vote exactly. locally, locally first. If you don't even do all the president and stuff, start at home first. I actually seen, this is kind of maybe, well, I mean, this goes to what you were talking about, but there was a uh, voting in Georgia and it was talking about, I think they were. Atlanta? All, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That's in Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. And then they were uh, experiencing, I think, voter suppression, they were saying. Let me read this out. It was holding them people back. That's crazy. Cause it was a white lady going crazy. She was on there screeching out power. She's like, I gotta go take my medicine, y'all. But you feel me? They can't hold us back. I tweeted all the major networks. I like it when white people go bad. They sound hella corny, but you feel me? They be preaching that power when they be on our side. They be saying something. <laughs> She's like, I tweeted all the major networks. You right, because I wouldn't have known what the fuck to do. <laughs> 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 oh, well, who do I tell? Go Mama! Ahead, <laughs> <laughs> fuck. I couldn't even go vote at the schoolhouse today. But they are saying voters in Georgia, in Georgia are experiencing long lines, broken machines, and poll sites that open late. So ultimately, voters are, they were being shortchanged. We just need to vote by mail. <sighs> Coronavirus and everything. I think in California, you can request to vote by mail. Um, so you would have to check your state. Um, mm-hmm. it's, yeah. Uh-oh. What's going on? I just want to be able to vote now. I vote never, by mail, bro. I never voted before. Uh, while we're speaking about voting too, I mean, since we only have well, Donald Trump and Joe Biden, please, I, I just want to point this out, Joe. I mean, low energy. Don't mess this up. <laughs> just don't mess. All you gotta do, you don't even gotta talk. Bro, he From calls here him on this sleepy out, Joe, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, don't he don't mess this up. Nigga, sleepy, Joe. sleepy Joe. <laughs> Like, he, Ooh, looks t- he looks tired. <laughs> he looks tired. <laughs> he looks tired. He be roasting. <laughs> but Trump, yeah, Trump really hit a new low. I think last week, what it was. When did oh when he was talking about George Floyd? No, that that, that was, was another one though. That was a, definitely yeah. I was I don't know. Did you see what he it's said? It's like it's set in stone. Mm-hmm. It's like it's crazy. What did he say? This is probably me paraphrasing, but he was talking about, like, he said, George Floyd is looking down on us right now, and he's probably happy about what's going on. And then he was like, I mean, first off, just that alone. He's talking about the economy, too. Mm-hmm. Like, bro. <laughs> bro, I remember when he said something like, he was like, the African-American community is the ones that ain't got the jobs and that 54% of their community is unemployed. And he literally said, hey, both me. Bro, in the words. What could be worse? Man? In the words <laughs> What's of the worst all that American P. Bitch ass nigga. What did he say? He said we ain't got no jobs. The president can talk about people like that. <laughs> That's how I mean, my sister been talking talk about, about people. <laughs> That's how he's been talking about he people be since he's been president. All, too, bro. all right, but I also want to give y'all, uh, get so y'all yeah, opinion. Go vote. We gotta get him out of here. Yeah, yeah. make sure we don't get him out of here this term. He's never gonna leave. Make sure y'all vote. And I mean, I guess that's just for Joe Biden in okay, this case when it comes to Donald Trump. They really sent. President. They really sent troops out here, bro. Yeah. They really sent na- the National Guard. On peaceful protest, man. Yeah, yeah like what? What? Yeah. All but, the all the intercoms, the recorded scanner conversations about police officers saying run over police. I mean, run over people in in Brooklyn or New York, something like that. Like shoot them, run them over. 
and the white people on the scanners talking about a hundred dollars for a black guy's head and fifty dollars for a Mexican. Remember that one? Oh, well, it's so much, so much, so, but it's so much, much. so <laughs> much. Right. I try to it's stay off of social so media right now energy. too. It's, yeah, they really are having a game with this. But it's, I mean, it's really just how it's always been since. This is a new plantation. Sick. Also, want to get your opinion on. I mean, it's some good news. There always is. The NBA is supposed to be coming back. However, in the midst of all of this, there was an article that recently came out that showcased that some players do not want to play right now. And then the reason why is because they believe that they can overshadow the movement that's taking place. Right? Because even we just made the point that due to the coronavirus and everything being shut down, no distractions, this movement was able to excel like it is right now, the Black Lives Matter movement. So some players do not want to play because of that. However, you have some players that do want to play because they believe that they can, that everybody will be glued to the screen watching them and that they can use the platform to be a greater voice for the Black Lives Matter movement. You watching the scrimmage, bro. So... You watching the scrimmage with no fans? That's a scrimmage, bro. I think they said they was gonna play um, some of the 2K crowd in the in the background. I can see the two cr- no the 2K people there, crowd like. audience. Oh wow! I heard they. That <laughs> no, was crazy. Right. Whoa! It's supposed to be round one of the playoffs, and you put a 2K crowd in there. Supposed to be the finals, right? Yeah. Wait, what is it? June right now? Yeah, it's supposed to be the finals. I mean, well, at this moment, but when they re kick off the NBA, mm-hmm. round one with no fans. I'm gonna call it right now. The Pelicans gonna get that eight seed, and then they gonna upset the Lakers. I would love. We love to see. Oh, Lakers. what? That's that, that's, that's my prediction. <laughs> we and the Celtics that. coming out of the East. I just want to see Zion. I Jones. said it here first. No way. I don't care what he I mean, I'm, only, I'm, I'm with you with the Celtics a little bit, but the Pelicans taking the Lakers? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't think the Pelicans no, are going to make it. To go cra- <laughs> I, got, I, got the, yeah, I got the MVP Blazers. MVP type like performances. Every game, <laughs> they going to sweep them. <laughs> <laughs> but what's your thoughts? Who, who, who do you agree more with? The players that want to choose to play or the players that do not want to play? Um... Because it's both arguments. Is, I mean, I understand both sides. I could get Yeah. Shit. But in general, I just thought that they, they should just wait until next year to resume. Hmm. But, um, what, about a month or so, they're going to be back mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I don't really have any kind of excitement for it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. It's a mile ahead. If I had to choose, I'd get both sides, but I don't know. I feel like I'm part of me want to see basketball. I don't know if this is the fan in me just wanting to see basketball, but I do feel like around because everyone's going to be watching NBA at the time, especially this is going to be like playoff basketball, they could use the platform to get the message across even more. Um, of course, they got to do it in their own creative way. And especially around the time where we're going to be voting to, I feel like they can use that as a platform as well. Get Trump out of the office. But, <laughs> that's, I mean. NBA against Trump. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you. Curry said. Hey, hey. Oh, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love seeing that. Donald Trump has got to go. Yeah. Your MVP said it. So it matters. You heard it first. Man. And uh, if I had to choose, I really would prefer to see soccer. Um, Boo. I can't believe it. And it's already starting. Like June 10th. The best part of soccer is the, June is the crowd, bro. They it's like the environment, bro. I'm starting to see the crowd is the best but part I of do, most I of do these like sports. I, I, I do feel you on that. Yeah, the crowd keep you into it, but I I played it like 
I played it. They should just have everybody mic'd up. I played a Vallejo High mm-hmm. game, you know? Everybody mic'd up. You know, they they have to bleep stuff, you, stuff out. You bleep know? everything, probably. It's like, going to be delayed. <laughs> if they did that for the NFL or something, they're going to have to bleep everything. Get it out of the bottom, bro. That boy said, uh, <laughs> Hit him with the major. He said, boy, whack me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was hella funny. Bro, that altercation by Nurkic and uh, Ben. He was like, you are so, why are you even talking? You're so ass. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna hear all of that. Hey, so in the East, watch out for them, Philly. Um, no cheese steak. The Bucks, the Heat, and the Celtics. I yeah. think out of those four again. Future trade, Giannis? Next year? Something about this year. I don't care. I just want to see Giannis so I can come out of my house and go to a Warrior game. I ain't, I ain't nobody trying to see Giannis with the Warriors. What? I what? ain't trying to see that. That'd be the That's best. That's where I got to step off that'd this bandwagon right here. I can't ever, do that. Man. I can't I can't go through a whole nother a dynasty type anyway. team. We know oh. you're not. We, but thank you for not tuning in to another. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't deal with another stacked team like that. But you, have, I'm happy. You can't deal. With it. What do you mean? The one year that we finally got like open competition, we got hit with the coronavirus, and now we like we were getting ran too. We was like, "Who? I get a big break." <laughs> 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 Tired of eating these eggs. <laughs> I'm ready. Oh, I'm no, ready no. now, coach. The Warriors don't need them either. The Warriors about to be good next year. They're not year. playing. Yeah, they're gonna uh, be good. They're gonna be good. We're gonna get like a, a top. Three probably pick hopefully, mm-hmm. and we gonna grab we gonna grab somebody good. Hopefully a big, but Clay coming back, Steph coming back. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people like Pascal got time to play, yeah. so but we yeah. gonna be back. But yeah, I mean, felt like we didn't hit every topic for this episode. What topics is left? Uh, I mean, that's it. Unless y'all want to talk about uh, was it what what was his name? Um, the commissioner on the NFL, how he didn't mention in his statement, he didn't mention Colin Kaepernick. That was a little petty. Wait, he did what? <laughs> what that? He, oh, you said that was a little petty, like him. Right. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> you Commissioner. Yeah, I thought that's what I thought he was like. I, was I like, like oh, I gotta edit that out. What are you talking about, bro? That's actually my friend. <laughs> <laughs> like, man. We support Kaepernick over here. I want to see Cap sign. I want to see Con Cap sign. Ooh, I can't see that, but that'll be dope. <laughs> I can't see that. I can't even. <laughs> hey, they hold, they hold jersey is literally the American flag. I can't see it. That's with, what with some gray in it. <laughs> <So tall. laughs> I hope to see it. It would be amazing. <laughs> that would be awesome. It would be amazing. That would be meant to be, bro. Exactly. They, they would not in lose. the American flag. They going to hate it. It would be them and the Chiefs for like oh, the rest oh of the I'd love to see that. Is Tampa Bay on the NFC? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, imagine the Bucks versus uh, the Patriots in the Super Bowl, and Cap is on the Patriots. I don't know. I, I'm going for Cap, bro. I don't even like the Patriots though, but Me still go for Cap. Yeah. I looked up some old stats because I seen a wow. meme. They was like Kaepernick was five for nine with uh, two interceptions, or like five for nine at halftime with four interceptions. Hmm. And I was like, I remember this game for some reason. It was a game against the Cardinals. We lost like 43-6, to 43-3, to 43-7, to or something like that. I don't remember none of this. <sighs> well, it was bad, 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 bad. bad after times. the Super Bowl years, though, like maybe a year or two after Jim. Oh, yeah, we was losing, though. That was just bye, our bye. whole team was bad. Bro, they was like They blamed Cap, though. They were like, <laughs> they were like Kaepernick <laughs> wanted the whole system changed and woo, woo, but now – He's not playing well, and I'm like. But now you see offenses consistent, consistently. You feel me? Building their offense around players now. You feel me? And quarterbacks like mm-hmm. yeah. Lamar Jackson isn't a typical quarterback, but he will bust your ass. <laughs> like, Flourish. Like it's. I don't know. Sometimes people just have to 
be okay with, with to adapt. You feel me? Be, bro, be cool crazy. with change. I remember that game too, bro. There was like they, they were in bad field position. A couple picks, bad, thrown in bad areas. Got returned to the house, put them down on the scoreboard early, and then you know landslide kind of stuff. <laughs> You got bad, but you can't blame that on Cap. A couple tipped passes, yeah. maybe one late throw. <laughs> yeah. They really try to make Kaepernick out like he's trash. Now look at Lamar Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Russell Wilson. About the same Patrick deal. Mahomes, even though Mahomes is on a whole nother nah. level, though. I ain't going to lie. I'm just talking <laughs> about the physique, though. Uh-huh. The sprint, the sheer speed, ability, that's only compared to one body right now. Mm. Yeah, that's right up there with LJ. I ain't saying he had the same numbers, but Cap might have had a stronger arm too, tighter spiral, played baseball. Yeah. All right, but um, that is this week's episode. We are back, and before we go, we always end off with closing words. We want to leave the people with. So, who want to start it off? Yeah, the closing words for the people. <laughs> Get your sermon, bro. That's the first thing. <laughs> That's all you heard from the <laughs> was closing words. <laughs> closing words. Okay. Closing words. Yeah. Um, black lives do matter. Yep. Um, we not saying more, but we definitely not saying less. That's for damn sure. And... I just hope that we can keep our our, our foot on the accelerator, you know what I'm saying? Keep it going. Mm-hmm. And because if we slow down, then we're going to eventually keep slowing down. So as so long as we stay connected and, and willing to listen to different people and seeing that we don't live the same, we don't we aren't treated the same, so... You don't look at that, then I feel like you're not trying. Um, but yeah, and justice for Nia. Um, we will get justice for my sister, and uh, peace and love. Yeah, give me one of them shirts too. Hey, I mean, if, I'll pay for oh, it too. No, I don't I know if y'all. I'll pay for it. All right. I don't know how many came in. All right, Kim, uh, you got some closing words for the people? Uh, if I got you, I got you. All right, cool. <sighs> you know. <laughs> well, it has it's been a very eventful six months in 2020. Oh, yeah. Um, it's only been six months? Uh, I feel like I the just, whole year. It's only been five, really. Man. Only been five. I want to thank the, the the man upstairs or whoever it is that pulled the strings and keep us here. Um, you know, because every day is a blessing with the COVID and police killing us off, stop killing us, Black Lives Matter in every color. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh man, but. I love having opportunities to come on this show and kick it with my guys, man. And talk about the stuff that, like Peter Griffin would say, just grinds our gears. Yep. It was just a very hard <laughs> intermission <laughs> between the times we last had an episode. It was really a lot. Like, 2020 really slapped us by the time we got here, bro. Right? Yeah. Man. Like we said, it's only been five months. It's Ooh. feel like it's been the whole year already, but I want to leave us off with this. Um, I just want to address a couple things real quick. Shout out to Mikey Williams. He's supposed to be the number one basketball player in the class of 2023. He said that he's considering going to a HBCU. He would change college sports if he does that. If he does that, then that's dope. That would be dope. That would be dope. Yeah. We'll see. So, Mikey said that. Yeah, Mikey said that. So go ahead and do it oh, if you if that's what you want to do, man. What Support happened? you for don't, don't, don't say don't tell me stuff like that until you confirm me, bro. <laughs> but that's what he said. No, that's literally what he said. But that's I mean he has you know, as a basketball <laughs> fan though, that don't make you feel some type of way. I mean, you watch Great. Mikey? Go to dope. Howard. You watch Mikey go to Howard. Oh, to take I love me some HBCUs. But boy, get your ass on that court. 
I don't know what else you do be- beautiful as, as you dunk that ball mm. and play basketball. But finish that school, go to the HBCU, represent. See, see what you can do about getting to the league. And the lo- going crazy. And the last thing I want to say too, um, a lot of people have been trying to change the narrative by saying, like, I don't know, just being blatant about it. A lot of white people have been saying, or people are, who are against the movement, been saying, like, white people are killed by the police, too. Just want to end this off by saying this. Then that just means y'all should be protesting, too. That's a good point. So That is, lo- that is a good point. Damn. So y'all should be out there protesting with us. Man, so what the, what's the And problem? voting with us. Man, yeah. I got to vote. Go lose we gotta some get shit. Some, we got to <laughs> go keep this power moving. <laughs> and lose some shit, too. Fuck they money. Why you mad about us? Fuck like, they money, man. Y'all breaking the go on social vote. contract. You feel me? Go out and vote, protest, numbers. and let's be united. How many white people were killed in custody? We need to bring those numbers up before, you know. And then when you do that, you have to like divide that by six because that's the like our proportion when it comes to ratio. The sadly. ratio, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> that being said, we are the Voiceless Podcast. We will never be silent. Thank you guys for listening, and thank you guys thank you. for watching. It's Good night. Hot. Peace out. I gotta pay these bills. We getting out of here. Bye bye.